Therapists of Reddit, what was your biggest I know I'm not supposed to judge you but holy sh asterisk t moment. I was counseling a 13 year old girl for anxiety and she reported sexual abuse from her stepdad. I called her mom and told her mother I needed to call child protective services. Turns out that CPS was already aware and the abuse was first report around the patient's age 7. Mom was aware of the abuse and stayed with her husband anyway. It was a complicated situation, and it wasn't. How could she not do more to protect her daughter? Sorry lady. I'm judging. I work at a residential group home. We had a kid who we had admitted about 4 months prior, when in a family session they mentioned they had parasites, I'm like what? Mom goes oh yeah our whole family has them, we don't believe in getting rid of them since they're part of our biological ecosystem and I'm just dumbstruck, we spent three weeks afterwards convincing this family it was an infectious disease concerns as other residents have fecal eating behaviors and various other unsanitary issues that could cause a unit spread. Three weeks of education, planning, and worse of all convincing this kid and mother that their IQ wouldn't drop because they had agreed to irradiate the parasites. Lots of CBT work, but Jesus it took way longer than any of my team expected. Once had a patient whose wife shook their baby to death. He wanted help reconnecting with his wife. At the time I was a young father of a newborn myself, and he triggered a lot of fear in me for my own child, a deep loathing of his spouse, and pity, the how pathetic kind, for the patient. I tried for three sessions, met his spouse and everything before handing the case over to my supervisor, who knew about my initial reactions, and tried to help me through it. Unfortunately, it ended up being more about my feelings than his, and I was new to the profession at the time. These things are expected to crop up from time to time, but I was still taken aback by my own reactions. It's not often I get to talk about my profession, but here goes, I was working at a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center and had a client come in who was a self-proclaimed drug lord. As we worked together, he told me about his history. Included in this history was how he got to where he was currently at. During the conversation, this man admitted to selling his sister into sex slavery, forcibly injecting her with several sedatives and narcotics, and having several people teach her a lesson, what this meant, he never shared. He told this story with a blank face, smiling only when he recalled the good times, which he referred to as times when he had enough heroin to get through the day. I'm not sure where he is at now, but this man inspired me to work with victims of sex trafficking, because not only do they deal with the stigma of selling their bodies, they often manage drug addictions. People would honestly be floored if they realized how many people were addicted to chemicals that they were forcibly given. Therapist here. I don't think I've ever judged clients. My job is to understand them and their experiences and help them make the improvements they are ready to make. But I have very directly made my thoughts clear about choices, especially choices parents make for slash about their kids. This probably comes off as judgment depending on the client's insecurity about the topic. One example was telling parents of a child I was working with with a severe mood disorder, that had made both suicidal and homicidal threats and attempts, that it did not seem like a good idea to buy the young kid a gun, especially the week after the mother spent the session sharing her fears that the child would murder her. I was once in my psychiatrist's office a bi-monthly, 15 minutes med check. She asked me what was going on more as conversation. I told her that my in the last six weeks, my three elders, and and two uncles, I was guardian slash conservator for had died one right after the other. My wife had a heart attack. My daughter attempted suicide. And my mom broke her hip and had laid on her floor for a week before being found, she drank and ate from the dog's bowls. I got that call within 10 minutes of setting up the last funeral. She stopped the meeting, got on the phone with a therapist in the office next to her and had her postpone her next meeting to speak with me. I was so fucked up, I had no idea. I think she saved my life.
I feel like a lot of the comments saying that they never judge their clients might be working in voluntary services or they've been very fortunate in their client base. Judgment isn't an inherently bad thing. It's how we know that murdering people is wrong. So when a convicted pedophile client told me, nothing gets me going like a pair of little girls worn panties, you better believe I judged the fuck out of him. I continued to work with him and I treated him with compassion and respect because he's a human being worthy of both, I did my job because I'm a professional. But I can't honestly say that I didn't judge him. I judged that he should never be around children. I judged that he is not yet ready for change. I judged that his access to his own daughter should be closely supervised. That's a lot of judgments. Understanding your own inherent biases and how they influence your work is a very important part of training and practice. Here's my most recent one, as the pandemic worsened here in the US and more lockdowns are on their way, one of my most extroverted clients and I brainstormed ways to meet her social needs while remaining safe. The following week she cancelled her session and told me that she's positive for COVID after attending an orgy, which definitely wasn't one of our ideas. I let out the deepest most defeated sigh after I hung up the phone. I joined in a review of a secluded patient and he threw a cup of wee and POO in my face when we opened the door. I tried to be objective about his experience but I just thought, what a cunt. I work in inpatient services so it can be hard to challenge myself at times, individuals with diagnosis of personality disorder, for example, can do things that in isolation make you think they're just being bratty or manipulative, but to think of the experiences that shape them to react like that in a given situation can help to clear my judgment and find compassion. Harder when someone bites me or hits me with one of our fabulously detachable anti-ligature curtain poles, though. I work with youth and adolescents who have anxiety, trauma, and slash or depression. Some of the kids I worked with had some pretty severe attachment issues. Regardless of this, I never thought I'd have to seriously explain. You can't just buy a straight jacket for your kid. Feeding your kid ultra spicy ramen each night instead of the meal everyone else is eating isn't specifically defined as abuse, but you have to understand the emotional abuse that this causes. Your kid isn't trying to kill you because they stand in your doorway at night crying. That's likely because they're scared of their traumatic nightmares, but feel like you will just yell at them if they wake you up. Clinical psychologist working primarily in forensics here. This means my clients are usually involved in legal proceedings, family court, juvenile court, criminal court, etc. My job is usually to evaluate or provide treatment. I'm not there to judge, that's the judge's job but of course I have my thoughts. I am usually impressed by the justifications people make for shitty behavior. The one that irks me the most is when parents manipulate their child against the other parent. I've had to do therapy for a 5 yo who said she doesn't want to see a parent because they haven't paid child support. Excuse me? What 5 yo knows, understand, or needs to be worried about child support? I got my father accusing my mother of turning me and my siblings against him, we were 14 yo, 9 yo, and 7 yo at the time, and never acknowledged that he was the one doing all kind of shitty things to us. We had 8 years of pure pain with social assistance. We got fucked by familiarist CPS who only thought about the good for the family. I'm kinda sensible to this argument as it has been using against me, my siblings and my mother. Edit. I see that many children are or have been in my situation. Specialists try to mark us with pot, parental alienation syndrome, a really controversial syndrome that isn't really official, but neither was proven wrong at the time. When you as a therapist get to that point, it's time to start thinking of referrals. Be genuine with your client. And then refer out. You have to have unconditional positive regard or you'll never achieve therapeutic rapport. I think for me, the one that comes to mind is a frequent caller to the suicide hotlines. He'd call in and say he's not providing his phone number or name, 
he would just say that you had 10 seconds to convince him not to kill himself over the phone, or he'd blow his brains out and it'd be your fault. Then he'd count down from 10 to 1 while you're on the phone talking. At 1, he'd hang up. I'm sure the whole point was to make me feel bad or prove some point, I don't know, I have insufficient information to make an assessment with just that. But I have to admit when I was trying to sleep on days he'd call, especially the first time, I was thinking, fucking asshole better not be dead, fucker. Thank you fo watching slash hearing. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for more forum videos, you may even click the bell. Leave a comment if you want to, and click the next video to get to another video.